riders are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the Welcome to Hashtag Today on Rappler. Hindi ko wala. Hindi ko matandaan sa akin. Alam mo namin, I invoke my right against self-incrimination. A defiant Janet Napolis deflects Senator's questions and denies she stole billions of lawmakers' pork barrel. Totoo. Pinaproteksyonan mo ang tao na baka siya ang pinaka-guilty. But I will give you this counsel. Tell the truth before before the senators affected have you assassinated. Senator Santiago tagged Senator Enrique pork barrel scam mastermind and advises the police tell all and turn state witness. And Super Typhoon Yolanda, international name Haiyan, triggers signal number four over Eastern Visayas. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Janet Lim Napoles finally faces the Senate. One after the other, senators try to extract answers from the alleged mastermind of the pork barrel scam, but she manages to deflect most of the questions. Was it a futile exercise? Natasha Gutierrez reports. <coughs> Getting blood from a stone, that's what drawing out answers from a defiant Janet Limnopoulos was like. At times feisty and other times disengaged, Napolis makes sure of one thing. The senators probing the scheme at the Blue Ribbon Committee hearing would not get anything from her. Napolis denies every accusation thrown her way. The biggest denial? that she is the mastermind of the scam that convinced the lawmakers to channel their pork barrel to her bogus non-governmental organizations in exchange for hefty kickbacks. At wala kayong kinalaman under oath sa anumang transaksyon kaugnay ng PDAF na may kinalaman ang mga kongresista at mga senador. Opo, Your Honor. Nanipiso ng pera ninyo hindi nang galing sa anumang scam na may kinalaman sa NGO o PIDAF. Opo, Your Honor. Na yung mga NGO na pinorma na nakinabang sa PIDAF, hindi sa inyo yun. Opo. Her whistleblowers shoot right back. Sir, uh, nagsisinumaling siya kasi bago po ako pumasok, 2002, meron na siyang mga kliyente. Uh, Inadvise po ako ni Ms. Janet Napoles na mag-form ng 20 na NGO plus one NGO na pangalan sa mother niya. But Napoles sticks to her guns. She raises her voice when Senator T.G. Gingona insists she personally knows lawmakers and their staff who allegedly benefited from the scam. What do you mean kilala? Personal na kilala o ano? Ah, na senador, di ba binoboto natin? Kilala ko sila pero hindi nila ako kilala. She also denies legislators received kickbacks from her. Do you think ang isang mababatas o isang chief of staff pipirma na mga voucher? Kaya po parang kasinungalingan ho yan. Wala namang mga voucher, voucher na ano at wala hong ganyang bigayan ng pera. Her former employee testifies Napolis ordered the shredding of vouchers that documented the receipt of commissions. Ang sabi naman po niya, kailangan ishred lahat ang mga evidences para uh, in case na magkaroon ng, ng search warrant, wala pong makikita na makaka-connect sa kanya doon sa mga NGOs at saka sa mga legislators. Uh, dahil po sa dami ng mga papeles na nishreddies, bumili po siya ng heavy duty na isang shredder para po hindi mag-overheat. Asked about her properties, she admits owning the luxurious Ritz-Carlton apartment in downtown Los Angeles, but insists the money came from her husband's coal business in Indonesia. Asked to describe her wealth, she floors the gallery with a massive understatement. Uh, you admit na mayamang ka? You have a lot of uh, money and resources? Hindi po. Hindi? So, for, for example, uh, how, how would you consider yourself? Uh, average middle class, upper middle class, mayaman? <laughs> Tama lang mo sa buhay. As the day wears on, Napolis turns more uninterested, refusing to engage senators. 
Lawmakers try convincing her to speak, but soon turn frustrated. Anyway, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'd like to ask a lot more questions, but uh, the proper time no, after the senators have asked a question, maybe we can discuss whether the witness is being evasive or uh, abusing the power or the right to, uh, or using mistakenly or, uh, or um, uh, knowingly using the right against self-incrimination because I've noticed matalino naman eh at kaya naman niya sagutin yung iba but selective kung kailan naalala at hindi. The hearing ends earlier than planned. Gingana insists her appearance at the Senate was not a waste of time. Satisfied because there was a stark contrast na nakita ng taong bayan na yung isa, general denial lang ang sinasabi, hindi ko alam, wala akong alam, hindi totoo yan versus very, very, very positive assertions with details. Like I said kanina, pati yung black number, lot number, sinasabi nila. Faced with those details, who would you believe? He says her demeanor was very telling. It is the first time the Paulus faces the Senate, but Gingona says it may not be the last. The senators will convene to plan its next move. They finally got her into the Senate chamber, but virtually got nothing from her. Now senators must deal with moving on. They say they are considering citing the Paulus in contempt for evading questions and admit they may go as far as filing perjury charges. Natasha Gutierrez, Rappler, Manila. The woman at the center of the pork barrel scam faces Senator Miriam Santiago in Thursday's Senate hearing. She tells Janet Napolis, tell all before others implicated in the scam assassinate you. Ayi Makaraig reports. Sagutin mo muna. Paano mo masasabi yun? Ilan taon mo silang kasama? Eh, hindi ko alam. Yung iba. Hindi ko alam kung paano. Janet Lim Napolis is defiant, at times even answering back. But the supposed brains behind the pork barrel scam is no match for Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago. Santiago returns to the Senate, turning Napolis' testimony into a lecture with free legal advice thrown in. After listening to denials for hours, Santiago tells Napolis there's a difference between saying she doesn't know the answer and invoking her right against self-incrimination. Meron ka bang kilalang personal, hindi lang sa kilala, ang mukha, ang pangalan o oh, alam mo na senador ito, kilala mong personal, yung parang kaibigan mo na. I invoke my right. Alright. Diyan sa kanila, sino pa ang nakausap mo tungkol dito sa kaso plunder? I invoke my right po. Siyo lang kausap mo, I invoke my right. Uh... <laughs> Tapos ng Halloween, wala na mga multo. Santiago advises Napoles to tell all and turn state witness, warning her there are serious consequences to her silence. Kaya kung si Enrile ang the most guilty, sabihin mo na ngayon para malibre ka na at hindi ka na niya ipapatay. Alam mo yung taong yan, pag pumunta yan sa bathroom namin dito sa aming senator's lounge, may gwardiya yan sa bathroom, sa kubeta, na nakalong, long firearm, assault rifle, ganun. Kaya may hirap kang huwag mong i-underestimate yung hindi na yan. May asin pa rin si Tanda. The senator tells Napolis that only by turning state witness can she avoid 20 to 40 years imprisonment in the plunder case. Napakahalaga na hindi ikaw pinaka most guilty. Dahil kung most guilty ka, ibistahin ka eh. Baka you will be sentenced to 20 or 40 years, no? Uh, wala pa naman silang naimbentong cream na will take away 20 years from your face or tell the truth before before the senators affected have you assassinated Santiago also turns her ire on administration ally and local water utilities administration chairman Rene Villa who admitted to lawyering for Napolis the senator questions his credentials calling him an OFW masquerading as an international trade lawyer Santiago also minces no words for Senator Serge Osmeña, who made fun of her in front of media. Gusto ko lang sabihin doon sa kalaban kung tinukutya ko. Dahil sinabi ko, only the court can grant immunity. Yun nga ang problema, pang tao, hindi tapos ng college. Mag-lecture sa bugada tungkol sa batas. But Santiago is most concerned about Napolis, calling her beyond evasive. Ignorance can be treated, but... 
stupid is forever. <laughs> so let's hope for the best. Let's just hope this is a case of ignorance. The senator insists someone of Napolis's background could not have acted on her own in convincing lawmakers and officials to cut a deal. Napoles may have successfully evaded the questions of the day, but Santiago urges her to think long and hard about her future. She says unless Napoles tells the truth, the only choice left for her may be decades in jail or death. Ayi Makaraig, Rappler. The counsel for the whistleblowers in the pork barrel case says Napoles' lawyer offered 5 million pesos to settle the illegal detention case against her. When lawyer Levy Baligod refused, he says the offer went up to 300 million pesos. During Napolis' testimony at the Senate, Baligod says Napolis' lawyer, Freddy Villamor, asked to meet with him after Napolis' cousin, Ben Herloy, was rescued in 2012. <laughs> So sabi ko, sige po, kung yun ang gusto nyo, sasabihin ko sa mga clients ko. Pero sabi niya, sige na, bibigyan kita ng 5 million para maayos ito. Sabi po ni William Moore. Baligod says after he refused the first offer, he was asked twice for another meeting. The third time, Baligod came face-to-face -face with Napolis herself. Hindi ko po alam na siyang kakausapin ko po eh. Basta ang sabi sa akin nung uh, nag-arrange ng meeting, Meron daw siyang isang very close friend na gusto akong kausapin. Magkano po ang alok? Tumaas naman siguro nung siya nakausap mo. Yun nga po ang ino-offer nila, 250 to 300, depende sa computation daw nila. Kasi gusto nilang paalisin yung mga witnesses dito sa Pilipinas. Responding to allegations he tried to extort money from Napoles, Baligod challenges Napoles and her counsel to release the alleged video. At uh, sinasabi nga po ng mga lawyers ni Mrs. Napoles at saka siya mismo na meron daw silang recording of that incident na nag-extort ako. Kaya noon ko pa ho challenge sila na kung meron talaga silang recording, ilabas, ilabas i-play para pati rin po ako ay marinig. Super Typhoon Yolanda, international name Haiyan, triggers signal number four over eastern Visayas. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says the eye of the typhoon is located 450 kilometers southeast of Gian, eastern Samar. It's expected to hit land Friday morning in Gian, eastern Samar, or Abuyog, Leyte. The typhoon has maximum sustained winds of 225 kilometers per hour near the center and gusts of up to 260 kilometers per hour. It's forecast to move west-northwest at 39 kilometers per hour. Signal number four is up over eastern Samar, Samar, Leyte, southern Leyte, Biliran, extreme northern Cebu including Bantayan Island, Capiz, Aklan, and northern Antique. Signal number three is up over Siargao Island, Dinagat Province, the rest of Antique, Iloilo, Guimaras, Northern Negros Occidental, Northern Negros Oriental, Northern Cebu, including Cebu City, Northern Samar, Bohol, Masbate, Tikau Island, Sorsogon, Romblon, and Calamian Group of Islands. Signal number two is up over Occidental Mindoro, Oriental Mindoro, Marinduque, Albay, Extreme Northern Palawan, Burias Island, the rest of Negros Occidental, rest of Negros Oriental, Sikihor, the rest of Cebu, Camiguin, Surigao del Norte, Surigao del Sur, and Agusan del Norte. Signal number one is up over Metro Manila, Bataan, Camarines Norte, Camarines Sur, Catanduanes, Southern Quezon, Laguna, Rizal, Cavite, Batangas, Lubang Island, the rest of Northern Palawan including Puerto Princesa, Misamis Oriental, Agusan del Sur, Visayas and parts of Luzon and Mindanao are bracing for the arrival of one of the most catastrophic super typhoons this year. Local government units prepare for mass evacuations ahead of the typhoon, which is expected to cause major damage. The typhoon is expected to hit areas still recovering from a magnitude 7.2 earthquake last month. This includes the central island of Bohol, the epicenter of the earthquake that killed more than 200 people. A local official says at least 5,000 people are still living in tents while waiting for new homes. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council adds local governments ordered evacuations and class suspensions in low-lying and landslide-prone areas. Weather Philippines says Yolanda has become a, quote, an extremely catastrophic super typhoon and is now, quote, the most powerful of all super typhoons for 2013. 
President Benigno Aquino orders local units and government agencies to prepare for the super typhoon. Aquino says Typhoon Yolanda may be stronger than Typhoon Pablo, which killed more than a thousand people last year. Sa kasalukuyan datos, mukhang pong mas matindi ang hagupit ni Yolanda kaysa kay Pablo. Nagdadarasal na lang nga po tayo na dahil sa tuloy ng takbo nito ay hindi na siya pumirmi sa ating mga lalawigan upang gumawa ng mga mas marami pang pinsala. Aquino says disaster officials are already deploying people and equipment to areas expected to be hit by the typhoon. He also appeals to residents in flood-prone areas to cooperate. Magsilbi rin po sanang babala ang payag nito sa ating mga LGU. Seryosong peligro po ang kinakaharap ng inyong mga nasasakupan. Gawin na po natin ang ating magagawa habang hindi pa lumalapag si Yolanda. Ulitin ko po. Samar and Leyte brace for the oncoming storm, as the strongest typhoon this year is expected to hit land Friday morning. Paterno S. Maquiel is there. He files this video blog. This is the San Onico Bridge, which connects Samar and Leyte, two of the areas to be hardest hit by Super Typhoon Yolanda. Pag-asa raised signal number four in the eastern Visayas region, and now we can feel the strong winds and rains here in this area. Pag-asa warns residents in these communities to prepare for stronger winds and rains this evening, as it expects Yolanda to make landfall in the summer later region Friday morning. The government advises residents in affected communities to evacuate promptly. Interior Secretary Mar Rojas and other government officials are now in the region to oversee evacuation and other efforts to respond to one of the strongest typhoons in recent history. Paterno S. Maquiel, Rappler, Samar. Just as Secretary Laila de Lima says, President Benigno Aquino cannot be subjected to orders issued by regular courts. This comes after a former congressman asked the Supreme Court to stop Aquino from talking about the Disbursement Acceleration Program, or DAP. De Lima says, no one can gag the president who's constitutionally immune from any kind of suit during his incumbency. De Lima adds, the president cannot be subjected to orders issued by regular courts to, quote, diminish or compromise his ability to regularly perform the functions of his office. On Wednesday, former Iloilo Representative Augusto Sihuko Jr. asks the court to stop Aquino and his officials from discussing DAP. While a case is pending before the Supreme Court, Sihuko says Aquino's primetime address last week defending DAP was a, quote, clear violation of the subjudice rule. Al Jazeera reports Swiss scientists who obtained samples from the body of Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat conclude he probably died from polonium poisoning. Scientists found at least 18 times the normal levels of radioactive polonium in his remains. The report adds the results of the tests, quote, moderately support the theory that Arafat was poisoned. Arafat died in 2004 at age 75, four weeks after he first felt ill, fell ill October that year. French doctors said he died of a massive stroke. The Palestinian leader's remains were exhumed in November 2012, following claims he was murdered. Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number five, Twitter announces it will list at $26 a share on the New York Stock Exchange. 70 million shares of the microblogging service company will be available at this listed price with 10.5 million shares of common stock sold as a 30-day option for underwriters. The total value is pegged at $2.1 billion. At number seven, the World Meteorological Organization, or WMO, says concentrations of carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide hit new records in 2012. WMO says the atmospheric increase of carbon dioxide from 2011 to 2012 is higher than the average growth rate over the past 10 years. The organization warns about more frequent megastorms, water shortages, and diseases unless significant changes are made to control emissions. A professor of ocean physics at the University of Cambridge says carbon dioxide has, quote, a ratchet effect. And at number eight, scientists say asteroid strikes similar to the one which hit Russia early this year may become more frequent. In February 2013, an asteroid about 19 meters wide exploded over Russia, causing widespread damage and injury to more than a thousand people. 
Professor Peter Brown says there's a need for a system that, quote, scans the sky almost continuously and looks for these objects just before they hit the Earth. The strike rates of asteroids are estimated to be two to ten times higher than previously believed. For the full top ten, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page. That crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that have gotten the most number of, of clicks, the most number of votes. Each of these 10 stories have affected our readers and our viewers the most emotionally. If you take a look today, front and center, the story that's taken the attention of the nation this is the live stream. As it happens, Napolis testifies at the Senate. You can see 12% annoyed, 3% sad, 5% amused, and a whopping 73% angry. Interestingly enough, connected to this, you've got the wealth of old man Revilla, again connected to, to um, corruption, 76% angry. And we have the typhoon coming in. Dangerous Yolanda heads for Visayas, 68% afraid. Even that has this red, 1% angry, bringing up the mood of the day, as you can see. Today, most people are angry. That is Rappler's newscast for today, Thursday, November 7th, 2013. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. Get ready, Typhoon Yolanda is coming in. I'm Maria Ressa. Stay tuned to Rappler. As we say here at Rappler, tomorrow begins today. <laughs>